Boy, it's hot out there, guys. Thank God my build air is air conditioned. <laughs> but hey, we got a gentleman bringing his uh, Ford in uh, from out of town, and he said the case is busted. He said it's totally destroyed. So we went ahead and got a core out back that we're going to tear down and get ready for it. Uh, that way, when it shows up, we can just get the job and turn it around really quick. So what we got here is a 4 70 w uh, We have a, a input speed sensor. We have an output speed sensor. Uh, we have your neutral safety switch. Now, these things, uh, depending on what year, uh, they might be not have a, a speed sensor here. Some of them do, some of them don't. Just depending on... Uh, what type of uh, vehicle it is. So, hopefully this core is good. Got a little med metal on the magnet or on the end of this sensor here already. So, let's see. Hopefully, keep our fingers crossed. A little bit of metal there still too. We got a bunch of these out there uh, that we can tear down and get parts from. <laughs> Now this is a four-wheel drive, you can tell, of course. Got a nice adapter there we can save and uh, save a customer some money if he ever comes in with a broken one. Now we have a river a few miles out of town, so uh, four-wheel drive stuff around here gets abused quite a bit. I think we've done it ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So we have a neutral safety switch. Now, when you go to put this back on, uh, you put your lever in neutral, and then uh, you'll see that line there and that line there. You'll physically just line that up. If I can turn it like that. Click, click, turn this, line those two up, and uh, that's how it goes right there. Pretty simple. Looks like we got a little bit of water inside. That is real nasty. Think, oh, think that filter's pretty bad. I'd say it is. Now, this one here physically doesn't have a wiring harness. It has what we call like a circuit board instead of the, a physical wiring harness. This is a late, late model. Now the earlier designs uh, physically had wires. This is what we have aboard. Now I've seen these fail, cause problems, solenoid codes, all kinds of stuff. Because we have our shift solenoids here, we have our lockup solenoid, we have a connector here, we have a pressure control solenoid here. Now we do have a tab here that uh, a bracket right there that uh, when you put the uh, solenoid in or change it this bracket right here slides down into a groove in this solenoid so it'll slide right down in there and lock in that way it can't come out so pretty simple of course it looks like we've got <coughs> water contamination which that's what I hate to see you see the rusty bolt <coughs> of that tab, so. Anytime I buy a four, I look for water, but... Hey, it don't smell bad. That's one thing to get about it. Can't smell it at all. 
Yeah, it's pretty bad. Now you can see your alignment pins here for your plate and stuff that align your valve body. Of course, uh, anytime you have water, your gaskets are always going to bond to your plate, to your case, and all that type of stuff. So, never good. Sorry, I forgot another screwdriver. I mean, that's just a, a sign right there of water contamination. It takes a long time to get it off. I mean, you got to scrape with razor blades and all that type of stuff. To, you don't want to put it in the parts washer. You want to get it off before you put it in there. Your third gear accumulator here, you want to uh, always change these. These are cheap. Uh, they do fail. This piece will fall off. The edges will peel off, stuff like that. connector here. We don't see really any issues with them leaking or getting fluid in the connector or anything like that. Not a real common problem. Now you can see here, this is a common problem. You see the overdrive uh, servo snap ring right here is busted off right here already. Let me get that out of there real quick and we'll look at it. got to be rough. So this is a real common problem. You can see the snap ring broke off. Anyway, check it here. This thing will wobble, get wobbling and stuff like that. Cause the breakage. Now the overhaul kit doesn't come with a snap ring, so you're going to have to find it. Now, some of them will come with the outer snap ring, but not the inner. And you have your reverse servo here that applies your reverse band. Same way here, this thing's really hard. I can almost break that off. Hard to rock. So, same way the cover. I'm going to change this because the cover is hard too. It's supposed to be real soft. Uh -oh. We have our overdrive servo here, or accumulator, excuse me. Now, your shift kit that we put in these uh, will come with different springs and stuff in here to change this up a lot. So you also you want to make sure you change the piston. I mean these are cheap. Uh, <laughs> so you get a pair of wire cutters, you can grab this roll pin right here and just pull that out. Like that, pretty simple. Sometimes it's kind of tough. To get that out, but so you got to take your linkage plumb out of here to get your pressure control solenoid out. Now this will go in either direction unless it has a lever mounted to it. So you don't have to worry about that. And then you got your pressure control solenoid here. Of course you got your case seal. You will pop that out of there, get that out of the way while you're there.
you never know what you're gonna get when you buy a core. I tore down a 4L60E the other day and got five pinion planets all the way through it. So a really nice unit. Now, we have our pump stator here, and we have our intermediate uh, clutch apply piston right here for second gear. Get that out of there. Kind of like, like a 350 train, the, the piston's in the pump. Pushes against the clutch like that. So anytime it goes to second gear, it's always trying to push the pump out of the train. Trying to push it out, so. You got your pump gears. We don't usually see these pumps fail very much. Uh, Ford did a really good uh, had a good idea when they built this pump. Basically, it worked from day one. Clean that up and look at that really good. So we got a lot of cores. The valve body we'll throw away, stuff like that. And then that's already contaminated and totally rusted up. And then we have our intermediate clutches. And then we have a wavy apply plate or snap ring, or whatever you want to call that. It's not a snap ring, it's a, just a wave. Right there. Big old wave, huh? Sometimes they got good ideas, sometimes they got ideas you wonder about. Engineers, guys. We have our overdrive band. We have our reverse clutch here, kind of like a 700 4L60. Trannies are all built similar, guys. I mean, they vary in different ways, but they all kind of got the same attitude, <laughs> the same way they work. You know, you got your forward clutch, you got your, your reverse clutch, you got your overdrive band around here. You know, normally your 4L60 would have a second gear band around here. I mean, so pretty crazy how they work. And we have our reverse clutch here. A lot of times this bevel plate right here will be busted. You're going to look for that. Your wavy snap ring. Then you have your bevel plate. So these are bad about cracking. And you have your apply piston here. You have a, actually a ring here too that this sets on, a metal ring. That sets down in here. Now these are square cut seals here. There's no lip to them, they're just square cut. Oh, and then this one in here. Takes a tool to put this back together. Uh, we got pit special pistons that this stuff sets down in. Now we have a, uh, what we call a dialed sprag. You can hear it clicking. Now we're actually going to get rid of this drum. We won't use this back. Uh, we'll go back with a standard style sprag assembly. And these are bad about it. They had updates on these, uh, recalls, all kinds of stuff on this drum right there. So We have our forward clutch. You can see here, like something's been rubbing. Kind of weird. I have to look down in there. Now 
we do have our forward clutch. A little hot spot there, but wonder what, what's been touching right there. Get my squeezy. Try this new one here. Definitely want to thank everybody that sends us something. I mean, they always appreciate it. We we'll enjoy using it and showing you how good it works. We're going to look at this bearing here. Because uh, it sets in here and keeps this drum forward off of down in here. But we want to, why was this touching right there? See that? So we're going to have to look, we could have more damage down in there, in there, not holding everything forward. So, got our small shaft here. A lot of times this bearing right here fails. I'll look at your sun gear on both sides for any wear. Same way here on this gear here, these are really bad about wearing. Now. If you notice, guys, this is actually met. It looks like metal. Sounds like metal, but a, mag a magnet won't stick to it. A magnet will stick to that, but it won't stick to that. And the reason why is because this sensor reads through this shell, and it actually reads this drum like that. See? So if this was magnetic or metal. Uh, the sensor couldn't see through it to read this drum. See? So, pretty crazy. Now, the, some of them are metal too, so you gotta be careful. Physically are metal. Like I said, well, this is just a core uh, we're tearing down to, to build for a gentleman. Now, here's our anti-clunk spring. I remember 4L60E has one too. It looks a little different than that though. So. Sprag runs, looks close here. You can put a new bushing here. Scotch bright this up really good. Now you will have uh, some wear where this runs at, right? Well, actually you can see this is starting to get a lot of wear where it's rocking in the case even. So this whole piece will have to be replaced. But uh, a lot of times where this sets at will wear too and you can weld it up and clean it back up. So, but this has got so much wear around it that it's starting to really work in the case. So we really need to look at the case to even see if it's any good. So, same way here, this bearing right in here, we're going to have to really check it good because if this bearing right here is starting to fail, it could let everything move forward or backwards and cause this plate to rub. So see, we got something failing down through here, uh, letting everything fall to the bottom. And we have our reverse band. Of course, it's totally gone. There's no material on the tips no more, you can see. So. And we have a bearing here. rings here but all this stuff will be replaced but I'm mainly looking for some reason to see why that that issue happened right there and right here this brain sits in here so now one thing about this unit here uh, anytime you put bushings in this unit you want to make sure you step your bushings because if you don't, uh, this is one tranny that will get you in trouble because it's got a stepped bearing that sets here. If you put it flush, it's going to eat this bearing up right here and you're going to have metal go through the tranny instantly. So. Of 
Now this is our third gear clutch. That looks pretty good. The main thing on this drum is spline wear uh, with this shaft set in here. I mean, you'll get tons of spine wear. It'll get wear here where this shaft starts falling down in here farther. And uh, actually, they will touch right here. And when they touch, it plugs off your lube hole right here and burns the planetary gear up because of that touch. The early AOD trannies uh, had a big time problem with that. So this one's not as much, but we still see spline wear here. So. Uh, kind of a good core, you know, really hard to say. I mean, we got so many of these that we could tear down to find even a better one. We might even do that later because uh, this one is so dirty. So, hey, pretty cool though. Hey, y'all don't forget to subscribe. Thank you, Teresa, for recording, definitely. I seen you yawn for a second. It's tired, huh? I don't blame you. We went up early. Hey, y'all don't forget to subscribe again. Push that like button. Y'all have a great day.